Hello, my name is Jonathan Ringer, and I'm going to go over some basic Nix shell usage today. Uh, just kind of how to bring in dependencies uh, and then kind of get going with a basic shell.nix. Uh, so, uh, to get started, um, I have a Rust project here. And uh, one thing uh, to note is that I do have cargo installed um, on my uh, user profile. Um, however, if I were to try to build uh, the project from source, um, I have one issue, which is that I don't have a C compiler installed. Um, luckily, uh, Nix Shell's default behavior is that it tries to give you a build environment. Um, by default, this will be like the standard env, uh, and standard env includes one for GCC. So I could do Nix Shell uh, standard env here. Uh, this could actually be anything because standard env is generically like the, the baseline for almost all Nix packages. Um, but then if I were to repeat the, the build command, uh, you'll see that it will be build uh, successfully. However, uh, this is not a good way to use uh, Nix shell currently um, because number one, uh, this is kind of like imperatively done. Uh, what I would like to do is encapsulate all this into a uh, shell.nix, which then anybody can pick up and use to then develop on my application. So, uh, one thing we can do with Nix shell is we can use the peer command uh, and we can then uh, kind of see what assumptions are we missing. So here now if I try to do cargo build, like cargo is not even found. Uh, so let's create a shell on Nix where cargo uh, as well as my other dependencies are found. So uh, let me <laughs> also bring in a uh, text editor. Uh, okay, so let's uh, write shell on Nix. Um, what we will want to do is we will want to uh, bring in the package set. So we'll do with Nix packages here. Um, and the common convention with shell.nix is that you would use the uh, make shell off of standard env. Um, although I think make shell is also exported as top level attribute and this should work. Uh, and um, you're able to list any dependencies that you would uh, really want. So what I mean by that is uh, you could use build inputs, propagated build inputs, uh, native build inputs, and a few others. Uh, however, make shell specifically kind of makes it irrelevant which one you use. So I will just do build inputs here uh, and then we'll just list uh, what we want. So uh, cargo. Uh, we'll definitely want cargo and I think that's mostly it for now. We should now just uh, be able to run Nix shell. If I bring in Nix. Um, oh, right. Since I'm in peer mode, uh, this did get rid of my Nix path. Uh, Yes, so my channels, my channels have been obliterated. Uh, that is, that's one issue. So what I could also do now is instead of trying to invoke these ones, uh, I could just um, do peer and then on the show Um which is a function but a path, and it's on line one. Uh, oh, right. This is my import. Okay, uh, and then here we should be able to do cargo, cargo build, uh, and it builds fine. Um, this is a much better way uh, to kind of encapsulate your uh, dependencies. Uh, largely for like most projects, especially like Python packages, uh, generally you have a whole list of like linting tools and other stuff that you would like available. Uh, that can just also be listed keep forgetting. Uh, <laughs> uh, that can also just be listed in the build outputs, so I could also put like Vim in here. Uh, however, this becomes like not um, specific to the actual project, but to just um, like my current workflow, which probably will not go over well if you had other coworkers here. Uh, one other thing that is u beneficial here though is that the make shell also respects a shell hook that you can pass. And so then here I'll just say something like echo high, 
Um, but uh, what shellhook is normally used for is kind of setting some environment vari variables uh, or running some initial commands when you want to jump into a environment. Um, and so then uh, if I run nix shell now, uh, you'll see that you'll see echo high. Um, this is really useful if um, you do have something like a Python project uh, and you want to go into like a virtual environment, uh, then your shell hook could be, hey, please use poetry vm uh, or whatever and activate my virtual environment. Um, okay, uh, this is just uh, a quick overview of how to use the shell.nix uh, to get a development environment going. Uh, I'll be covering other videos with more advanced features using nix shell in later videos.